In the first season, we did a, uh, you know, what's called a one -er. We did a, a two and a half minute tracking shot that takes people from the parking lot, you know, into the hospital, down the hall, up through the elevator, all the way up into the ICU without any cuts. And Donald's only job early in the scene was to uh, make a uh, basketball shot from about 25 feet. And Donald talks a huge basketball game. You know, he's pretty good. I give him that because I play with him, but he talks a big game. And uh, I was stuck waiting up at the end point, and he missed 21 shots in a row. Which and, it's, and the thing was always about 40 seconds into the shot too. So, but you know, so so for me, where most people I think would have been really upset about that and how much time it was taking, I knew how miserable he's getting with each shot he missed, and uh, I got happier and happier with how embarrassing it was for him. I hope that somewhere on this DVD is a series of that guy missing jump shot after jump shot so it's out there in the world he can't talk about how he could have played college ball anymore. That's off. Oh, way off. Don't think that me. I'm open. Oh. David. Ah! <laughs> Set. Action. I'm open. Oh my god! Turkey was amazing! Woman! Woman! Shush! You see, it's a lot cooler if we don't make a big deal out of it. Oh, right. Johnny sees a little tough with the background, you know. Uh, he never wants, like if he's talking and he's having a hard time with his dialogue and people are walking back and forth behind him, he'll blame it on them. Like, he doesn't know his lines, so he'll blame the background. I, I can't work with them. Uh, get rid of that, Garros. This is what John does. He doesn't really feel that a director is needed. <laughs> uh, right? So there's no need to have a director. We got my husband, who is the only person John will listen to. He calls him Billy. And when John feels that he needs another take, John says, again, again, I don't want to hear about it. I know, I know whether we have it or not. And sometimes these knuckleheads don't. Part of... The downside of working in, in a real hospital is we don't have uh, total control over the noise in and outside of the hospital. So during rehearsal there was some noise and here's Johnny C. McGinley who's done, you know, 50 movies um, uh, trying to rehearse and some of the guys were trying to get a jump on the next set and brought some equipment through the hallway and there was some noise and, and uh, John stopped and said to me and the director, we had we'd just met all of us and he stopped and said when you guys are ready call me for my trailer and they don't have trailers they live they, they have dressing rooms on the third floor and he stormed off and uh, I was sort of like okay this is gonna be my first and last day on scrubs and uh, Mark Buckland turned to me and I thought he was gonna say something like well, Paul what's going on and they just turned to me and goes they have trailers and <laughs> J.D. and Ellie decide to bungee jump together. <laughs> and Zach and I were too scared. I don't want to do it. Come on, what's the worst that could happen? We could die. Zach, Donald, Judy, and I had to go to Brazil the following week to do press uh, because they were going to start running scrubs in South America. And so at the end of the week, we were in Rio, and we all went hang gliding. And so after saying no to bungee jumping, and then we jumped off a cliff attached to a kite, they weren't so happy with that. Sarah, Sarah Chalk, who's usually very punctual, uh, one morning didn't show up for her call, and we called her, 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 and no, no Sarah. So uh, ADs are taught that, you know, that you just, you get the person. You don't ever give up. You never say, well, she's just not answering. So I sent somebody to her apartment. Her wallet car was there. Okay, knock on the door, banging on the door, pounding on the door. Nothing. She can't be there. She's not home. I'm telling you, if there's a person in there, there the PA's like, I'm banging on the door. I'm like, all right, find the manager of the building. Get a key to, the, to her apartment. So, finds the manager, gets the key. 
They open the door, Sarah, 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 nothing. He goes to the bedroom door, opens the bedroom door. There she is, sound asleep in bed. So she wakes up to her manager and one of the office PAs. She had turned the phone off, you know, the ringer's off, and so her phone wasn't ringing in the apartment because she was tired, I guess. And so that's how we got to her. We did the Zach the same way, Zach, same thing. Uh, called him, no answer, no answer, sent somebody to his house. His car is there, banging on the door, knocking on the door. PA jumped the fence and around to his window, banging on his bedroom window. First season, we would party like all night long. I mean, just in three years, I've aged enough, so I can't do that at all anymore. I can't drink and come to work the next day. But I'll tell you a funny anecdote. There's a scene, I can remember scenes where I'm so hungover that I'm, I'm barely, like, they need like a C-stand to, to keep me standing. I, I think I, it might even be still a little drunk when, uh, for example, the Elvis, no, no, sorry, the, the Fonzie fantasy. Do you remember that? I was so ill that day. There's particular crew members that we, we mess with. If you want a true Scrubs experience, let his breath fog the lens. <laughs> they mess with us back. Last season, uh, when Zach had his film deal, he was he had just gotten Garden State. He was you know, and now the the phone calls are going and the deals are going, and his career is starting to really take off. I mean, he just wasn't the guy in Scrubs. He was starting to have other things cooking. Uh, we had a day we were actually shooting right here, and uh, he was in one scene in the morning, and he's walking around like he's the big man on campus. He's leaving. He goes, I made a massage appointment, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna take a bath, I'm gonna relax, I got the whole day off and you guys are all gonna be here working. And he was, you know, kind of enjoying the fact that he was getting ready to leave. So I said to him sort of quietly, I said, you know, they're writing another fantasy for you. Because we, we, in the first season we did a lot of fantasies. I said, they're, they're writing a fantasy. And he's like, well, let's do it next then. I said, no, no, I mean, I think they're writing it and it's not gonna be ready for a while. They have to, you know, they're, they're, it's gonna be maybe after lunch. He's like, no, 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 and he got all upset and he ran downstairs to Richard Wells' office, who at the time was the first AD, and Randall Winston, who's the producer, was in there. And and Zach's like, what, what's going on? I, I made a massage appointment, I gotta go. Why, we're doing a fantasy? I, I don't, and, and Randall's like, gee, I don't, I don't know anything about a fantasy, but let me call Bill Lawrence, the executive producer. So he calls Bill down in the writer's room and, hey Bill, are you guys doing a fantasy for Zach? And Bill had no idea what Randall was talking about. And, and, uh, and, and Randall said, no, Zach, you're, you, after this, you're done. Well, he was pissed that, you know, that I had, so he came up here and he, He's like, you know, don't ever mess with me like that. I've got things to do and places to go and, you know. And Richard came up and he said to me, you know, you can't do that to the cast. It's, you know, it's not right. And, you know, because Richard's a, Richard's a very serious guy and, and he just, he was a little upset. And then at the, uh, at the party, uh, a few weeks later at the rap party, Bill Lawrence came up to me and he said, he said, if, if you do things like that, you will have a job here for life. Basically, he said, the more things you can do to screw with Zach and the cast, he said, be my guest. You will have a job here for as long as you want. Somebody thinks that they're too big for their britches. We're all able to knock them down back into their place. So, you know, oh. When Donald has medical jargon, you better call the wife and kids, tell them it's going to be a late night. <laughs> Zach Braff's nominated for a Golden Globe this year. He's now considered the, we call him the golden boy. You know what I mean? You let it that out. Or not, it's okay, because it's me. And that's just so, you know, it's just so he knows, you know, we're still here, we're your family, and so, you know, you got outside things going, but when you're here, you're here to work with us, and you're here to make it happen. This was some of the worst crap I'd ever seen in my life, and, um, Unfortunately, you don't get too many chances in this town, so uh, if crap comes along, you gotta do it, especially in television. Even though this is a little crappier than most television, I had to jump on board and I tried to do the best I could. Um, you know, when I'm sweating on screen, they don't do anything for that. That's just me sweating because I, I realize that this whole thing is crap and I'm trapped. 
once the camera starts rolling, I know it's gonna be preserved forever and I'm gonna be associated with this crappy show that was written by Bill Lawrence. Well, I, I'm very sorry for, for that. Well, you know, hey, it pays the bills. The camaraderie, I mean, they, you know, do, obviously, you know, you work five days a week, everyone is, the cast and crew kind of work long hours and hard, but still, the mood is very good on set, you know, very light. And how has it stayed that, that way? Uh, drugs and alcohol. <laughs>